Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are here on the loading screen because I discovered an issue when I started up the save. And so I immediately quit out and I decided to check it out again and it did repeat. So the issue is we suddenly get a lot more funds. This is the amount of funds that I ended up with at the end of the previous video. This is correct as far as I know. Now maybe there's something that gives us a lot more funds, but I was sort of shocked. So I just want to make sure. So anyway, and record the results because just in case. So 607,000, that's exactly what we were supposed to have. Uh, this test was just to make sure that the actual RP1 setup actually worked. And so that's what that is. And we proceed and you're familiar with the sandbox one after our testing for the re-entry stuff. And so you see here, suddenly I have 2,603,161, which is awkwardly 1,996,000 more than I had before. And now maybe it gave me something, but I have no messages. So I don't know why I apparently have 2 million six. Now, I mean, I just landed on the moon, so I don't mind getting a bonus, but it definitely did not give me a bonus by the end of the previous video. And there's nothing to indicate that I was supposed to get a bonus. First human moon landing Kerbal, by the way. We've got applicants. I know we have applicants. That's fine. Yep, I don't see anything. So what I'm going, I mean, Maybe you guys know that I'm supposed to get this money or something. I don't see any particular reason why I'm supposed to get this money. It is the same date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get out of the save. I'm going to restore the money that I was supposed to have. And we'll work from there. Okay, all better. Well, as far as I know, it is what it's supposed to be. So we will proceed with that. And I don't know if I want to do, whoops, uh, I don't know if I want to do a moon landing again right away. I would like to do something else. Well, I guess one thing we can do is send out the Jewel 4, and maybe we should construct some backups for that. So we'll send one Jewel mission, and then we'll also launch our lander again to the moon and stage that for the next mission to rendezvous with it and then land on the moon, but we will have to do a targeted landing, so we'll have to look at what that entails. So as we get closer to the Jupiter window, I've been thinking, and we really do need to be able to pick up more programs, it looks like. We're very contract constrained with this program system. We have just one mission offered. I never have to actually upgrade the mission control building because I can never get five contracts together at the same time, basically. So, yeah. I think we'll spend the money to upgrade the administration building, even though just one program slot isn't going to be able to get us a whole new program. We need three. But, yeah, I'll get construction started on that just in case. I mean, we need something to spend money on anyway. And I'll also start the tracking station upgrade here. So we're doing two upgrades. I don't see any reason to do the R&D building upgrade. There's just not enough research for us to do. Uh, it is all this stuff, but given my limitation that I am the European Space Agency, most of this stuff doesn't apply. So, yeah, I, I can't use some of these things. Though the AJ-10-190 uh, I can use. <laughs> now I've suddenly discovered something. Um, so, okay, we can use that. Uh, that is something that the European Space Agency has on the Orion service module, right? So, okay, well, we'll work our way up here. There's not a whole lot we can do in the meantime, though. I had actually, somebody had asked, I had picked MMH and MON3 specifically to match the AJ-10-190. Hopefully it's still MMH and MON3. Yes, it is. So, yeah. Okay, well, we'll work our way up there. So that's something. We have plenty queued, but we're not... Oh, that's, that takes a long time for some reason, doesn't it? Well, let's get the cheapy one done first, then. I mean, admittedly, that's all the way up here, so... I guess it should take a while. There's also nuclear stuff. And uh, we'll, we'll go 
at the same level through the orbital rocketry and uh, nuclear propulsion, I think maybe would be a good policy. So let me just click some of these. We've got 500 applicants uh, and only 600 researchers. Maybe we can boost our... We used to have a thousand, but I fired them because they cost too much. More researchers it is. But uh, not too many. Well, it seems like there's a limit to the rollout time. I... Yeah, I think we are limited to like 900 people working on that. So this... I mean, I guess we'll have the construction happen, but... I don't really need that many working on here if they can't roll it out any faster. Uh, so, we'll just try and rush it. 15th. I mean, we don't need need to rush it, but it'd be nice to actually be able to depart on the 16th, as that says. Well, it will be a nighttime launch. Throttle up. SAS is on. It's a little bit wiggly, but ignition. And launch. past the speed of sound. I've been thinking that I would like two engine redundancy on the core. And maybe we could create a new core that's five meters, sort of more like the actual Ariane 5 slash 6. But we would have two volcanoes. That's just in case one quits out. I mean, let's see, what's the... Possibilities here. Ignition chance 98%, but that's ignition. Time between failures is 9 hours, but at some point we're gonna hit that 9 hours, so. And it'll be the most inconvenient time. Not a lot of space on this one. There'll barely be enough space on the 5 meter one for two of them. Okay, fairing set. Nice sunrise, though. As per the plan, we will deorbit this stage. We should end up with just short of orbit with this burn. I'm just gonna start stuff. In fact, some of this stuff hasn't been done here. The mass spectrometry 4 and infrared radiometer 3. We should send those into orbit around Earth. Okay, and a brief ignition of these engines. We have two of them so far. And that's good enough for now. Alright, let's see about that transfer. We've been quite busy. I mean, I, it doesn't feel like we've been that busy, but it looks pretty busy. But I think some of those are actually things that have been kicked out by the moon. Little stages here and there. I do like to keep them around just to see how much I can get. It's just a weird fascination of mine. ESAP, 6,800. It's a little bit expensive. But we have it. And we should have enough to spare to capture into orbit afterwards. I mean, so I guess we'll be alright. The orbital requirement for this probe is fairly loose. So we don't have to worry too much about it. So during time warp, oh, it does have a net draw. Hmm. Are you guys working right? <laughs> but I mean, I guess we're in the middle of transmitting data, but still. Anyway, we don't need it to be balanced at the moment, so. Maybe just three RTGs was cutting a little bit close. I do feel like there ought to be no way that the RTGs are cheaper than the solar panels. But, you know, by a long distance, I, I still don't feel like that. <laughs> and go. Okay, next stage. And the avionics, thankfully, was turned on to begin with. That's nice. Doesn't seem like we're power balanced without shutting down the avionics, though. Not when it's transmitting data. That could be a problem later on, but we'll see. Nope, here it comes. Oh, 
I'd like to be going around this way, thank you. We're not trying to get to the moons, but we have a lot of science that could benefit from that. It's always good to have mid-course correction to check up on these things, so correct the inclination there. No, no, no. Don't don't, don't time warp. I didn't I hate the auto time warp thing. Off, off, off. Okay, well, we have a mild correction to get us better in line with the moons. We also have a Ganymede encounter on the way in, so that seems good if we can manage it. I accidentally time warped a little bit because of the auto time warp feature. But anyway, that node's in 300 or so days. So... Let's get rid of that. All right, we are already in interplanetary space. That's what stopped the stupid auto time warp. Um, we're balanced uh, on power as long as we're time warping. But as, it's still transmitting data right now, so... I mean, when I say as long as we're time warping, as long as the avionics is shut down in hibernation mode. So hopefully that'll stay all right. We'll have to keep an eye on that. So with that, let's roll out one of our landers and get it into position around the moon. That's currently taking too long, so uh, let's see. Uh, we're still building something there, but it's not. we're not going to rush on that one. Let's not rush. Wait, why is it rushing when rushing is off here? Oh, maybe it's pad by... Oh, it's pad by pad. Okay, no rushing. All right, here we go. SAS on, throttle up. Sending our lander into orbit around the moon. Ignition. And launch. We do have to train them though, I forgot about that. Uh, we're a little bit early. Heidi isn't ready yet. This can wait, it's gonna be hypergolic, storable, it's got storable fuels, but, yeah, December, and then she has to do the mission training, passing through max Q, okay, G-force mitigation, okay, booster set, Bearing set. Ooh, this is sloppy one. Why that one always goes off sloppy? Okay, that is our orbit. 284 by 267. But I forgot to deorbit this thing. Oh well. Anyway, uh, that's how it is. Separation. Okay, we actually have the landing locations marked out for us. And we are going to try for the locations that are closest to our tug. So that's sort of like that. Again, there's a safety measure. So probably Taurus Litro. Anyway, we'll take that for now and we'll make adjustments. Okay, and ignition. We have three good engines. And keeping an eye on our stage there. Thirty meters. It's a bit tight. There it goes. Here we go. That's it. Okay. Nope. Nope. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I, I definitely still like this orbit a little bit lower in line with other stuff. That's just a better match for some of these locations. Gives us some options. Right now, it's a little bit too high of a pass, so we will have a mid-course correction. Well, 
the difference between us and the tug of 1.3 degrees is the best we can do there. But that's more or less in line with all the other stuff and close to our targets. So we'll take that. So just a 3 meter per second correction. We're currently pointed at the sun with the solar panels. So we will proceed to our maneuver. Just an RCS burn. So unfortunately this has to wait quite a while, but maybe that gives us time to launch some sort of science satellite around Earth. Like I had said, we have new instruments that we haven't really done Earth science with. Okay, that's a nice and low periapsis. We probably should have some like surface science, but we'll put that on the second targeted landing mission. I want to make sure that we can do everything properly with this, with the Delta V that we've got first, before we load it up with other stuff. And... Ignition. Might as well dump the RCS with it as well. Okay, about the same as what we had before. We'll use some of the RCS right now, but we also might want to deorbit it. Okay, that's probably good enough. Oops, not have the throttle up. Could be dangerous. We're about to, well, we're not about to lose comms. We'll lose comms eventually. All right, separation. Okay, so this will spin up and ensure that maintains power while we're waiting for a while for the Kerbals to train. And this stage, we should be able to crash into the surface again. Okay, it is suborbital. So we could have used a little bit more of the RCS to get our lander to a lower position, but that's all right. So that is all working out for us so far. Let's go back to the Space Center. Okay, so this is our science probe. It is on a Deneb N, which is sort of an upgraded Deneb rocket uh, using our smallest launch complex. And we are using two of the RZ-20 Mark IIs and with a slightly modified stage there, but one that has already been tooled. And so there's no new tooling going on here. And on the first stage, we're using the Viking 5s. And, well, it's a toss-up whether those are the best thing to use in this case because uh, we don't have full flight data on them and efficiency wise they're not that much better but in theory they start off with better reliability uh, than the earlier Vikings have but anyway our main event is up here we're just using UHF band here so it can act as a relay for a lot of our missions that aren't S band S band will just talk to the the main ground stations anyway so for relay we want UHF and it'll be a good relay uh, for moon missions and stuff like that and we, it's been a while since we tossed up a relay satellite dish and a relay commsat. Uh, otherwise we only had one thing that we could actually tuck into the probe core as an experiment and that was this one and since we had three things that couldn't be put in there I decided to not put this one in there either just to keep things balanced. We've got four things. We've got the mass spectrometry four, got image spectrometry two, We've got Magnetic Scan 2 and Infrared uh, Radiometer 3. And as far as I could tell, uh, these three... Well, we don't want to start them yet, it looks like. <laughs> uh, we, uh, w when they don't extend, we can start them. You know, when they're in the probe core, uh, we can start them right away. But it's probably not good to ex start those just yet. Anyway, so and then we have solar panels, of course, and they'll be tracking and everything, and it should be pretty straightforward, but because we have those external instruments, we have some unlock to do, but we have a lot of unlock credits, so that's not a big problem. We just need to sort out staging properly. And Delta V-wise, we have oodles and oodles. We'll just put this into a, a high Earth orbit with a low side, so we can do the low science and the high science. And... Maybe that'll be a good idea. It does have a small thruster of its own. Uh, 17 minutes of burn time, one ton thing, but mainly, I mean, uh, that'll probably boost it up a little bit more. 
but mainly we're using the RZ-20s to boost it to a high orbit. Yeah, I'll probably need a little bit of that thrust. But anyway, let me just... I think I've got everything right. So, this will just be called the Deneb N, the new Deneb. And we will unlock those. And it is being built. And we will need people at the pad to build it. Well, we just finished our tracking station upgrade, but I just noticed that the next upgrade will take a cool million here. So, well, unless we're really pressed for that, I don't think we're going to be doing it. We'll see. So yeah, we are just launching this to have something to do while our Kerbals continue training. Technically, Muhammad will be ready before Heidi has finished the proficiency. And of course, Muhammad already is proficient with Apollo. Uh, so that is a thought, but I think we'll stick with our pairs as they were originally constructed. So uh, Barbell and Heidi will be next, and then Graham and Thomas will be after that. All right, here we go. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. There are four of them. And launch. Plenty of acceleration. There's no special inclination requirement for these. Unlike orbital perturbation, nor even an eccentricity requirement, so. We will be making it eccentric though. Very simple launcher. With a Griffin upper stage. Of course, it's not carrying very much. Such G-forces, though. Oh, heating. Uh-oh. Okay, cool down. No, no, I didn't mean to be so hot. Okay, um, staging. Okay. <laughs> Alright, uh, fairings, might as well now. Hmm, this tank is a little bit less resilient than normal. We only got 0.1 of the magnetic scan before. It's not that valuable, like image spectrometry is like 3 points after 90 days. Maybe that is surface biome dependent. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully it's not just 3 points. Okay, so those are all going. We don't have to be much higher than geostationary orbit level in order to get the high orbit signs because it's very slow up there anyway. So I'm just going to be aiming for a little bit higher than 35,786 or so. This can certainly get to the moon as well if we wanted to do so. Okay, we will need a little bit of the the main fuel of the satellite. We have no comps. Are you too narrow? I should have used the other ones. It's just... Yeah, I, I should just always have the Commutron 16s. Don't know why I put myself through this. Anyway. Being slightly more circular instead of really close at the periapsis is fine. It'll still be low over the Earth even if it's at 20,000. So... And it doesn't do good for comms if we're too low anyway. So, since we've got the angle limitation on the parabolic antenna, we'll just set this up a little bit higher. Yeah, we might transfer it over to the moon after it's done with the science here. Don't see a downside to that. It's just a matter if I remember to do it. Okay, let's see at periapsis how its cones are. Let's make sure it maintains constant communication. It's not bad. I think it'll be alright. Anyway, it's doing business and we can go back to the Space Center. 
and basically we are waiting for our Kerbals to finish training. So next time we'll try for our first targeted landing on the moon and we'll see how that goes. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.